Fort Donaldson, and Fort Henry. With Kentucky's decision to not join the Confederacy, Southern military leaders were forced to create key defensive positions along the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers. Forts Henry, Hyman, and Donaldson were devised to protect western Tennessee from Union forces using the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers as approach avenues. Unfortunately for the Confederacy, there were few good locations to choose from along the two rivers. Henry Halleck approved Brigade General Ulysses S. Grant Grant's plan to move swiftly to attack Fort Henry before Confederate reinforcements could arrive. As Grant's two divisions began their march south, gunboats under the command of Flag Officer Andrew H. Foote proceeded down the river to attack the Confederate forces on the Tennessee River. In a swift exchange of gunfire, Fort Hyman and Henry quickly fell to the Union gunboats on February 6, 1862 consolidated around the two former Confederate forts on the Tennessee River, Grant was determined to move quickly on the much larger Fort Donelson, located on the nearby Cumberland River. Poor winter weather and late arriving reinforcements and difficulties in moving ironclads to the Cumberland all delayed Grant's departure for Donelson. He wished that he would be able to get there before the 8th of February. On February 11th, Johnston appointed Brigade General John B. Floyd as the commander of Fort Donelson and the surrounding region. 17,000 Confederate soldiers combined with improved artillery positions on earth and earthworks convinced Floyd that a hasty retreat was unnecessary. On February 13th, most of Grant's Union soldiers had arrived in the vicinity of Fort Donelson and had begun to arrange themselves around the landward side of the fort. Several inches of snowfall and a cold winter wind sent shivers through both armies. With Grant's reinforced army now blocking the land exit, the Confederate forces knew that they would have to fight their way to freedom. On February 14th, Foote's ironclads moved upward to bombard Fort Donelson. Union, it led to a Union defeat on the Cumberland because many of Foote's ironclads were heavily damaged in the attack and Foote himself was wounded in the attack. Grant's soldiers could hear the Confederate cheers as the Union gunboats retreated. With Grant now making a new extended plan, the Confederate leaders had also devised a new plan to move all the forces they could to the Union right and to force an open path of escape. Early on the morning of February 15th, the Confederate assault struck the Union right and drove it back from its positions on Dudley's Hill. Brigade General John McClellan's division attempted to reform their lines, but the ongoing rebel attacks stopped them from doing that. Disaster loomed for the Union Army. But in what would become the most oddest and most improbable acts on any Civil War battlefield, Confederate Brigade John or Gideon Pillow, sensing a complete victory over the Union forces, ordered the attacking force back to their earthwork, earthworks thereby abandoning its hard-fought gains of the morning. Grant, who had hurriedly returned to the front, ordered Brigade General Lew Wallace and McClellan to retake their lost ground and rode the U to the Union left. The only thing that was stopping Smith's division was the onset of darkness. During the night of the 15th and 16th, Confederate leaders discussed their options. Despite many agreements, it was determined that, that surrender was the only visible option for the Confederate Army. Generals Floyd and Pillow managed to make various excuses and cross the river to safety. With the Union attack poised to strike Fort Donaldson, the Federal soldiers were surprised to see white flags flying above the Confederate earthworks. Brigade General Simon B. Buckner, now left in command, met with Ulysses S. Grant to determine the terms of surrender. Buckner, who was also was hoping for generous terms from his old West Point friend, was dis disappointed to get Grant's response. Grant's response was, No terms except unconditional and immediate surrender can be accepted. I propose to move immediately, immediately upon your works. The great Union victory at Fort Donaldson and Grant's uncompromising demand brought an avalanche of acclaim to the brigade general from Point Pleasant. The end.